Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. Welcome to the fourth episode in this mini-series. Um, I've been showing you how to create this Giphy property editor. And in this episode, what I'm going to do is help you get it onto the um, our Umbraco package repository. So the actual Giphy property editor official package that I created um, was released on here. And I, um, since doing the video, I also ported it to um, Umbraco 7 as well. So it's available for Umbraco 7. If you did want to use it on your projects, you can do. Um, so the project on GitHub for this that we're following along with is PRJ Seal My Property Editor. So all the code for for this, what we're doing in this video, is on there. And what we're going to do today is make this into a package to go on our Umbraco. So we don't need to do any more coding or anything. We're just going to um, use this anyway. So let's make a start then. So what we want to do is we want to go into in Umbraco in the back office. We want to click on Packages and then we want to do click on Created over here. Then we want to say we want to create a package. So the package that we want to create is My Property Editor. Obviously, you might want to give it a better name. The one that I created here was Giphy Property Editor. Then the URL for this, if we just put in the URL for the GitHub repository that you're working from, so that's mine on here. The icon URL, that can be any URL that's got an icon that resolves. So f for this one, um, I think it's, if I go into here, <coughs> oh no, not NuGet, I want the source code. So if we go into the source code, for the actual official one that I did. I've got an images folder in my repo and then I have a logo, either PNG or JPG. So basically, yeah, so, and then I can point to this logo and I think all you do is you just do question mark raw equals true. And that gives you the raw file from GitHub. So that's what I would put in there. So for now, let's just use that. We may as well. And Umbraco version, so I think I started this on 8.1, 8.01. The Umbraco version, so yeah, it's picked, It's obviously picked that up, so I trust that it's right. We've got the version number here of the package, so I will start out with the good intentions that this will be a 1.00, and I won't need to make any adjustments, but I always end up having to go to, like you'll see with this, 1.0, six for Umbraco 8 so yeah always it's never the final version when I first release something <laughs> let's put the author name so Paul Seal and the author URL I always put my website address not sure what else I would put and then contributors so if anyone else has helped you with this I don't know how we find what happens oh you just put names so we don't need to do that License, I usually re uh, release all my packages with a uh, MIT license. And then the URL, you just leave it like that because that's the license URL for MIT. And then in the Giphy property editor in here, if we inspect this and we just go into here, so and then we edit this as HTML. What I'm actually doing here, and I'm going to just steal this HTML. It's been a bit annoying. I'll just use my mouse, uh, my keyboard. Right, so and then I can just paste that in there because this does allow um, HTML. And I'm going to delete um, the title because the, it puts the title on the page anyway. So you don't need the title at the top. Then um, what we want to do is just include what's going to be in the project. So you, this is your chance to add some content if you want it to be included. So you could, in theory, like add if you had a prop. Say if you had a page, if that was part of your package, you could include that page, uh, and it will import that content in when someone installs the package. But we don't need to do that. You can also do it for document types, templates, style sheets, macros, etc. But we don't need to do any of this because all we need to do is just really I think all we need to do is just add the file 
So this is where we pick what files get included. So all we need to do on this is just to choose the folder, My Property Editor, within App Plugins and click Submit. And if we look at the solution, um, we can see that we don't have any actual compiled code to reference. So we don't need to reference the actual DLL at all for this. But if you were to create something, I don't know, like the models builder property value converter and you reference that uh, library uh, within this pro uh, web project then and people that install the package need that property value converter then yes you would uh, go to add and go to bin and then you would reference the DLL but we don't need to do that because that's not what we've got on this at the moment it's just a simple app plugins folder that we need to include and in this action section, this is where you could put some web config settings or things like that. You can, there's specific uh, language that you have to put in. So some specific, it looks like XML uh, that you put in and then that will run some package actions and you can do some custom package actions as well if you want to. But again, we're not having to do that on this project. So this is about it really. So we've just filled out some fields at the top. We've put in a bit of a description and then we've uh, picked the folder that we want to include so then we click on create and then I was just doing extra save and then you can do download so then if we were to download that we get a zip file down the bottom here show in folder and we can see we've got this my property editor underscore one zero zero dot zip if we just have a look inside that and see what's in there so we see we've got all the files they're not in a folder anymore they're just all in one folder and um, we've got everything that we needed all in one place and it's this package xml which is the key to all of this uh, it just tells it when it uns when it unwraps this package of what to do and if you see this requirements it'll say that basically you uh, you can't install this on anything less than um, Umbraco 8.0.1 so that's our package so let's upload it to the um, our Umbraco so I'll just need to sign in on our Umbraco so I've signed into Umbraco so let's go to the pa uh, let's go to my profile edit profile packages and then add a package so if you wanted to do it yourself uh, you can go to this URL or you can go to my profile and then packages and then click on add a package but I'm not sure if you've not already got any if that is already there but that's how you can get to it anyway with that URL so then let's put in my property editor in the title current version is 1.0.0 this is the bit that shows up here so one of the common problems that people have when they're putting their package on our Umbraco is that they don't update that so let's just go back to here and if we go into here we see that that download package the version number there is relates to that it relates to this then so package category so this is a back office extension package description so um, I think what we can do another little cheat is to grab all of this and then in here if we just type something and then inspect what we can do is we can edit this HTML and paste that HTML in we'll give it a go anyway yeah so now it looks professional <laughs> then we've got the you can you can just type this it is like a WYSIWYG editor anyway but rich text editor then, then again you've got the license so yeah it's assuming it's MIT and it is package URL so we will put the um, github package URL demonstration I don't really have one I'm just gonna put the github one again and the source code and the NuGet package, we don't have a NuGet package yet, so we won't put that. I've got no bug tracking URL. I've got no Google Analytics code. And I usually tick that it's open for collaboration. 
maybe if it's um, a commercial package you probably wouldn't tick that then you click on next these ones here are if you're going to retire the project but I'm I'm not intending to retire it I'm just adding it so you choose your file type it's a package and the version is 8 so I'm ticking that box there and then we'll click on this and we'll go to downloads and we'll choose that package so this is the zip that got created when we clicked on download when we created the package and we need to choose the runtime that's supported so it's 4.7.2 for um, on Braco 8 at the moment so when, once we pick the file we've got that as, as package we've got that says version 8 and we have chosen 4.72 for .NET runtime click on save file and now that has created it in here now one thing again another thing to look out for is a lot of people think that that's it and they don't click on make current so we'll click on make current because if you d if you don't it will just say the no version available so click on make current now it says default release is current so this is the one so when you upload other versions later what you'll find is um, that the other versions there'll be one that says current and then the others will have that button to make it current we can move on to the next step now and then if we have any images we can upload an image so we did have an image uh, this logo so I'm just going to save image into downloads and I'm going to choose that file And again, we've got Make Current, and Make Current makes it like the the logo. This is the image that you see on the on the package repo listing. So we'll go to Next, and I will, sh for a short period of time while we make this video, make it live. But I'll also take it off as well. So click on Make Live, and then Save. So now we've created our package. It should appear at the top of the repository. We've got it there. It's available for Umbraco version eight my property editor it says no current release now you saw me I did choose make current uh, so if we go back into um, profile edit pro oh, actually because we're logged in we can click on edit package and then we'll go to package files and you'll see that it didn't save that I said make current so we we'll click on make current so you might have this problem you probably will do because I think I have it every single time and I just go through to next next and then save and then if we go back to package listing again click on my property editor now it's there so that has got that and it's taken notice of it so you can either download it and then that will show in the folder obviously with a one because it's the exact same file name um, if a tip for you here if you if you're someone who has downloaded a package um, or you've installed a package or anyone else's package it really helps if you report the compatibility of this and the fact that I've clicked on download package I can now refresh the page and then I can click on report compatibility and then I can say it works only if I've installed it I'm just saying do this for other packages that you have used because it really helps other people when they're trusting these so that's how you can do that so I did a refresh then and now it loads as green so it's saying this is 100% compatible with version 8 uh, so that's uh, the compatibility let's have a look at it in the actual package repository then um, let me see right so if we go back into here and we go to come out of that and we go into packages if you see in new releases we have my property editor and it's got one download so that shows it shows up in there and then when we click on that you see all this HTML it all looks nice because of the HTML that we pasted in it it's formatted quite nice and it even with these badges these are a thing um, I can't remember exactly where they're from but you can basically search for app via, um status badge and you can search for NuGet status badge and you'll, you'll find that and you basically just put in your your project URL or something like that anyway so that is it it's there ready to be installed I'm not going to install it into this because that would be like a bit of inception because this is the package 
anyway so I hope you liked the video if you did like the video and it has helped you out then great please click on like and subscribe to my channel also if you watch the videos and you're expecting the next one to come out or you, you know you're wondering what's happening please comment um, I w sometimes if I do th something like this and no one's commented or watched it I think oh, there's no rush to move on to the next one so if you are watching it you know let me know please um, and if if you want to show appreciation there's no pressure but if you want to you can go to codeshare.co.uk slash coffee can't even spell it and um, you could just buy me a coffee if you want to there's just some options there if you wanted to buy me a coffee say thanks but uh, obviously no pressure um, yeah that's it so I'm going to go back in and just make sure that I take this off now because I don't want it to be live uh, anymore so I'm going to go back into here next 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 untick make live and then save so now if I go to packages it's gone because I don't want people finding that by mistake and if I refresh if I go to package listing here it's gone from there as well so that's good that that we, at least we know that works all right I'm actually gonna go now so thanks for watching see you on the next video where I do make it into a nuget package as well uh, I'll show you that on the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.